Okay, let's go. Here we are. Part six of the How I Retouch Photoshop tutorial series brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to be talking about dodging and burning, which is maybe one of the more popular things to do when it comes to uh, retouching your own images, and with good reason. Because with dodging and burning, you can control contrast and lightness, uh, and even tone uh, in some respect. Very, very microscopically, you can control exactly how your image looks. Now, a lot of times, maybe it could be argued people take this effect too far, maybe so, um, but some people do it very, very effectively and it looks really nice. We're going to talk about dodging and burning. Before we get going, I'm selling an entire course on how to retouch images and get into some of the other types of images you can retouch, like food and beauty and fashion and things like that. Uh, over on my website, tutvid.com, there is a link that just popped up on this video right now. By the way, you can also go back to part one and see how we got all of this stuff in place and what we've done so far to this image. If you're interested in learning about my whole process of retouching, go back to video one, check it out. You can download this image. You can follow along. And by the way, in the description of this video, there will be an action. Uh, it's the action that I use uh, whenever I dodge and burn. It just gets all of the layers and adjustment layers that I use right there, boom, in place, so I can begin my dodging and burning immediately. So here's how I dodge and burn. We're actually going to cover two different ways to dodge and burn. First and foremost, the way that I don't use as much but is maybe quicker and dirtier uh, is to just create a new layer. Uh, name it DNB for the sake of organization. We're going to go edit fill. And under fill, we're going to choose from the contents drop down 50% gray. Hit OK. Hey, where did our image go? Well, it's hidden beneath the 50% gray layer. We need to set this to a blend mode of soft light. You could do overlay. Overlay is a little punchier. We're going to roll with soft light for now. You can see all the gray disappears. What we're going to now do is use the dodge tool. Actually, yeah, I'll use the dodge tool. Uh, range, mid-tones, exposure 100%. Uh, let's roll with that and see what it looks like. It's probably going to be a little bit too intense. Uh, it's actually, yeah, maybe it's a little too intense. Uh, let's reduce the exposure to something like, I don't know, 50%, 60%, something right around there. Uh, Right-click, make the size of my brush a little bit larger. All right, so now wherever I paint is going to brighten up my image. All right, so you can see here if I shut D and B off, you can see we have, in fact, brightened up those highlights. So the key with dodging and burning is you're looking to brighten existing highlights and darken areas that are already shadowy. Now, the little trick that I want to show you here with the dodge and burn layer like this, with just the dodge and burn tools, is if you're using the dodging tool, the tool used to make things brighter, and you need to burn, well, of course, you can just go and choose the burn tool. But if you just hold down the alter option key, you can switch right from the dodging to burning tool. And then when I let go of the alter option key, I'm back to the dodging tool. This works with both of those tools, by the way. So if you just grab one of them, you can go and begin doing all of your dodging and burning. And, uh, you know, just hold down alter option when you need to burn something, darken something up. Uh, and uh, you can go ahead and, and do a lot of your dodging and burning very, very quickly uh, with this tool. So you can see there's before, there's after. I'm going to delete that dodge and burn layer because that's not how I like to work with my dodging and burning. I like to work with two curves adjustment layers. And hey, we've seen this before, right? When we retouch the eyes. It's a very similar concept. Uh, what we're going to do is set the top layer to the blend mode of screen. And we're going to select the mask and hit Command or Control I to invert it. Fill that mask with black, therefore hiding all that brightening. Uh, down here on this layer, we're going to set this layer to multiply, which is going to darken things up. Great. Select the mask, Command or Control I to fill it with black. I prefer to work with shadows first. Um, in fact, I'm going to name this adjustment layer burning, and I'm going to name this adjustment layer dodging. All right, I'm going to begin with burning. So I select the layer mask, and I grab my brush tool. I set the opacity of the brush tool to 10% by hitting the number 1, and I'm just going to use a large, soft-edged brush. Now, this is kind of important. I say large, but it's very relative. So if I'm working on the highlight here on her nose, I'll probably use something like a 50 pixel size brush. You can see it's about the width of her nose. But if I'm going to work on the highlight on, your, on her forehead, I'm going to make my brush quite a bit larger because I want all of these tones to fade together. Oh, we're working with burning, by the way, so I wouldn't be working on the highlights if I'm burning. I'd be doing stuff like the shadow here beneath her chin, maybe darkening up her nostrils, right? Darken the area here to the one side of her nose where we have a shadow already, maybe thicken up her eyebrows by darkening them. All right, let's zoom in. Instead of talking about it, let's do this. Uh, so I'm working on burning. I'm going to grab my brush tool. Oh, and I know one last thing before we jump in. You're probably getting sick of me doing this. You need to learn the hotkeys to make the brush larger or smaller, and those are the left and right square bracket keys located just to the right of the letter P on the English keyboard. So there you can see the left bracket key makes my brush small, right bracket key makes my brush large. I'm going to go with a brush kind of about uh, maybe a little bigger than this. One of the first things I like to do is work just around the edge of the face. Oh, by the way, you need to have your foreground color set to white. 
right? So you can either double click that or just hit the letter X, it flips your foreground and background colors. White as the foreground color. You're painting with white, and we're just gonna go right around the face, and uh, I'm gonna paint in like this, and just kind of bring out that shadow a little bit. So you can see, there we go. We've just done that little bit of burning in. Now that we've kind of looped the face, let's go over the eyebrows a couple times. So I'm gonna go once, twice, yeah, probably twice is probably good for the eyebrows. It's just gonna make them look a bit thicker, see that? Let's come over here beside the nose, fill out that shadow a little bit, add something to it beneath the nose, darken the nostrils a little bit, uh, the edges of the eyes, just a kiss, uh, the little spot there between uh, the you know, little thing everyone has on their upper lip, uh, maybe make her mouth opening just a touch darker, the shadow beneath her lower lip will accentuate that a little bit. Uh, we already brought out the jawline a little bit, we can dodge and burn the hair as well. Yeah, let's work on the hair before we move on. Alright, so I'm just going to add darkness here to these bits, I'm just going to fly through this here rather quickly. All right, darkness there. And again, where you have to make the brush smaller, you know, don't hesitate. Make it a little bit smaller. The The final result is so much better when you don't have just random dodge and burn darkness and brightness, you know, hanging out over other parts of your image. It really, really does make a difference. All right, so great. We're going to darken that up, darken that up. Cool. Good, good, good. That's great. We're going to accentuate that little valley in the hair. And remember, if you watch the, the bit on hair retouching, we, we flattened a lot of this hair out, and now we're kind of bringing a lot of the texture back into the hair uh, by dodging and burning. Now, one of the cool things that I like to do with dodging and burning is anywhere where somebody's holding on to something or making contact with themselves, their own skin, whatever, if you just make sure you add a little just press of shadow in between where their hand meets you know, their skin, or in this case, her hair, if something about it just it makes it look really, really cool. Uh, so cool, we'll do that right underneath the hair here. Great, so we did that. All right, now let's move uh, on to her arm. So here, we've got the shadow of her dress. So we're just going to accentuate just the little edge. You can see I'm making the brush bigger up there where there's more shadow, smaller down here. I'm going to work those shadows there on the wrinkles. Um, right here underneath the, the bosoms. We're going to, wow, I went, I went biblical on everyone right there for a second. Uh, all right, we're going to accentuate that. Well, see, now here, by the way, um, you can accentuate the wrinkles, or you can actually burn in the top of the wrinkle, and in essence, flatten out the wrinkles a little bit. So that's one way to kind of get rid of some of those wrinkles. And when we come through and dodge, maybe we'll paint a little lightness into those shadowy areas, and that's going to help us kind of get rid of some of those wrinkles. So just know you can go either way. Here, I want to get up underneath her hair there. Uh, all right, let's do right here along the side of the arm. All right, so where the arm meets her, uh, her, her side, right here underneath the arm, great. There is like something there, but I don't just want to bring out a shadow for the sake of bringing out a shadow. You see that it looks bad. Uh, let's go up here to her arm. Let's get the back of the tricep and then right through there where there would be a little bit of something here on the back of the elbow, back of the forearm. Great. Back of the wrist, back of the hand. Cool. Under here on the back side of her elbow. And that's probably pretty good for uh, burning as far as burning on her. Uh, let's do some background burning. Now this I'm going to just be very quick with. I'm just going to hit the undersides of the trees here, make them a little bit darker. Uh, we do have details in the building, and sometimes it's nice to go along and just get those details and, and do them nicely. I'm not, I'm not at all doing them nicely here. I'm just trying to rip through them. Uh, but you can just go through. Whoop, that just looked bad. You can go through and just hit you know, details on uh, buildings and things like that and just really make the whole scene look a little bit more dynamic. Cool. All right, there we go. So there's burning. We did that. Now, if there's clouds in the sky, you can accentuate the bottom side of the clouds. There's going to be a little bit of a shadow on the bottom of the cloud. Uh, and the same thing when it gets to dodging. You might want to brighten up the top parts of the cloud. All right, let's go back to her face, and we're going to talk about dodging now. With dodging, uh, what we want to do, I, I want to build my highlights out a little bit. So I like to begin with a smaller brush, click a couple times, make the brush a little bit bigger, click it a couple more times, make it even bigger, maybe click once, maybe twice, something like that. And you can see we've just built out a very soft highlight there on her forehead. We'll go above the eyes again. Again, you want to be careful doing too much dodging and burning around the eyes. Uh, harkening back to our tutorial in this series on eye retouching, if you go too crazy around the eyes, you tend to make people's eyes look like they're popping out of their head. They're almost like lizard people or something. It's very bizarre. Uh, we're going to go with a very small brush here. You can see we've got this nice highlight here along her nose. So I want to keep that intact. All right, great. Uh, also, you don't want to go too heavy with the highlights on the cheeks. They can tend to make people's cheeks look heavy because it'll really bring out the shadowy part of the highlight on the bottom part of their cheek. All right, let's do this right in here. Great. We'll add a highlight here to her lips and also right across the top of the lip. All right, you see that right there? Cool. 
Uh, there's a little highlight here on the chin, which will build out a little bit. There we go. Great. All right, let's add some highlights to her hair. Again, be careful adding too much in the way of highlights. You might say, ooh, highlights, it'll make it look shiny. But if you add too much highlight, it all it does is kills contrast. And it makes like one very specific part of your image look very low contrast and almost like it's got this weird uh, glow on it. So just, just be careful when it comes to that. There we go. Great. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller down here. Go ahead and build this part of the hair out a little bit. Anywhere where you see natural highlight, right? Like right in there, we see a natural highlight from the light that we were using, maybe from the ambient light. Uh, right here along this part of her hair. Great. Cool, cool. There we go. That's good. There's a little bit more brightness there. So you hit these just little highlights, right? Easy peasy. You just follow what's there. It's almost like a coloring book. Uh, all right, there's a little bit of a highlight here along this side of her neck. I'm just going to brighten that a little bit. All right, let's come down here to the shoulder. Let's brighten up uh, over the cap of her shoulder right there. All right, back to the chest we go. Uh, let's just kind of fade this together so it looks right. Uh, let's see, we got too much going on there. I'm going to flip colors. I'm painting with black now. I'm going to paint away some of what will be brightening there at the bottom. All right, there we go. All right, painting with black again. All right, now what we want to do is paint here with a relatively large brush. I want to just accentuate the tricep. So... Like, doing it like the way I just did it is bad. It uh, doesn't look good at all. Uh, so I might actually want to reduce the opacity. I'm going to hit 0, 0.5 to reduce my opacity to 5%. There we go. It looks pretty good. Hit the number 1 again to bring us back to 10% opacity. Uh, that's how sensitive this can be. You might need to go from 10% opacity to stinking 5% opacity. Uh, but you got to do what you got to do. All right. There we go. Uh, uh, there we go. Excuse me. All right, let's try just painting a little bit of light into these shadows here on her dress. See if we can kind of make some of these wrinkles disappear. I mean, you can. It, it almost looks like we're fooling the eye into into thinking that there are no wrinkles there. Um, obviously, the wrinkles distort the fabric a little bit, but I mean, you can look. There's before. There's after, and you can see we have virtually smoothed out uh, part of the middle of the dress there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this highlight right in here. Again, we're working on the the dodging layers uh, layer mask. All right, the back of her arm, like so. Cool. Uh, do, do, do. I think that's probably good. I, again, if you go too overboard, she's already starting to look a little plasticky, um, but I don't mind it for the sake of this tutorial. We can always dial it back because we have our adjustment layers. Let's hit the uh, bright spots on these trees. All right, I'm just going to do it all very quickly. The bright side of the building. Ooh, that, actually, that just looked terrible. Let's try that again. There we go. Something a little bit more like that. Uh, we got a little bright spot down there. All right, cool. And I'm not going to fuss too much with the background. But you can see there's before dodging and burning. There's after dodging and burning. Now, how do I dial this in? Well, first and foremost, I like to duplicate these layers. So I select both layers and hit Command and or Command or Control J if you're on the PC. Uh, and now you can see it's just made everything look, you know, we're heading to video game territory now with regard to the way she looks. But here's what I want to do. I want to select the layer mask and go Filter, Blur, Gaussian blur and probably blur this like 65 pixels, maybe 70, 65 for this image works well. Select the layer mask for the burning layer, go filter Gaussian blur and apply that same 65 pixel blur to that. Now what we're going to do is blend these four layers together. So I'm going to select both my dodging and burning layers that have been blurred pretty heavily and just reduce the opacity maybe to like 50. I'll select my dodging and burning layers that have not been blurred and I'll reduce the opacity of them as well, maybe not quite to 50, maybe 65, 70, something like that. So we're sort of further blending all of our dodging and burning together. This is my favorite technique uh, when I'm dodging and burning. So I can shut all those layers off. That's before dodging and burning. Turn them on. That's after dodging and burning. This also is why it's so important to use a smaller brush when you're working on details because we are going to blur it anyway. So if you already have it hanging out over like the sky and it's a pretty drastic change, when you end up blurring it, you're going to see like haloing all around her head and all kinds of details that start to look like they're kind of blended and just, you know, just very weird looking stuff starts to happen. So you don't want to do that. So this is my favorite method of dodging and burning. So if you want the action for this, um, you're going to see an action down in the video description. How the action does not automatically paint in and follow your highlights. That's handwork that needs to be done by you for every image that you want to dodge or burn. But it'll be an action that just drops your, your two curves adjustment layers, sets them to the blend modes, gives you the filled masks, and names the layers so you can just click a button and then start dodging and burning. Uh, very fast, very easy. So for dodging and burning in Photoshop and curves adjustment layers set to multiply and screen, well, multiply apply and screen there we go and for a whole lot of hand painting uh that's it get it got it good nathaniel dodson tutvid.com i'll catch you in the next one you want something done ask someone who is busy
That's a quote from Matt Helm, which brings me to my question of the day. Do you count looking at email as part of your work, or does that not count as work hours? I would love to know what you guys think about that. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. Also, hit the like button for this video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Sign up for my newsletter. You get 30 free tips and tricks on how to work faster in Photoshop the moment you sign up. And you can also follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.